Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio, and then their Detective Pikachu cards have finally gone and been revealed. We know what they are. We know what they do, and ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ourselves a ditto that looks really genuinely good these are very much promotional cards for the movie and as such some of them are not particularly impressive some of them don't fill us with joy but this ditto absolutely does fill me with joy now Looking at the basics here, it's a colourless Pokemon, which means it doesn't get any extra tricks. The 60 HP can be both a blessing and a curse. In terms of blessing, Professor Elm's lecture lets you search it out. That's a good thing. In terms of a curse, yeah, we've got two Boswell that hit 30 HP each. Or 30 damage. Either way, it's a one-hit KO on you, and that's a bad thing. Yeah, you're weak to fighting. And as I've said, the weakness to fighting really sucks because we have prominent fighting Pokemon that do 30 damage and get a one-hit KO. Your retreat cost to one is quite low and does open up a skateboard, but it's not all bad. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, there is one good thing about Ditto, and it is an exceptionally good thing about Ditto. It's the attack. The attack is called Copy Anything, and it reads, Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. If this Pokemon doesn't have the necessary energy to use that attack, this attack does nothing. Now, this is a really, really good attack, which is going to honestly make a huge, huge difference. But only in the right deck, and only in the right matchups. Now, straight off the bat, this isn't Black and White Zoroark. Black and White Zoroark was a nuts good card that I'm convinced if it was released today would see a huge amount of play. It was over the top good. The difference with the Black and White Zoroark was double colorless energy foul play. You just copied an attack. And the huge difference was you didn't need the correct amount of energy. So you just had a double colorless energy, and personally, one of the best uses I found for it was the Black Kyurem EX. Black Kyurem EX came along, and Black Ballista, 200 damage, discard free energy. So you could just use Zoroark to get a one-hit KO on Black Kyurem EX. It was a little bit silly. This isn't that, because you've got to have the right energy. So essentially... If you've got the correct energy, and if you're against a Pokemon that can KO itself, you are absolutely golden. Now, another card we need to compare this to is Nihiligo. You see, Nihiligo is kind of like this and kind of not. Nihiligo is a basic. Nihiligo attacks for a single psychic energy. However, you can copy any attack attached to your opponent's Pokemon if your opponent has exactly two prizes remaining. Now, Nihiligo, like the Zoroark, can copy an attack without needing the correct energy, and that's good. But the one thing Ditto has in common with Nihiligo and better than Zoroark, it does not say the defending Pokemon. So you can copy the attack of any Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field, just so long as you have the requisite energy. And honestly, a lot of the time, this is best for mirror matches. So, let's say for argument's sake, I mean, let's go back to Black Kyurem. Black Kyurem was really, really good. You would play it with Blastoise, and then you would pop a whole bunch of water energy on one lightning, do 200 damage, which basically back then KO'd everything. And people would use Black Kyurem to KO Black Kyurem, and then after a while, people went, hey, what if I use baby Black Kyurem? Hey, Nick. And then they could go and KO a GX for non-GX, swing the prize race in their favor. Yes, it was very expensive, but it didn't really matter because you had Blastoise accelerating the energy. Well, Ditto can do the same thing here. Now, one of the things is that Black Kyurem was great because it hit for weakness. Ditto doesn't. Ditto is a colorless Pokemon. Ditto hits literally nothing for weakness. If you go back to the Garchomp Wars then you'd be hitting Garchomp for weakness. It would be great. Incidentally, in the SP era, this would be phenomenal in terms of being able to take out Garchomp, copy other attacks, etc. This would be redonk. 
but it's not in that format, so it's kind of a moot point. So you're not hitting anything for weakness, but if you're against a Black Kyurem in a Blastoise deck, whack a bunch of water energy on, whack a single lightning, and all of a sudden, ditto is getting a one-hit KO on Black Kyurem EX. And it really doesn't matter that it's only got 60 HP, because your Black Kyurem went down the following turn anyway, so it didn't matter. It was kind of irrelevant. So what we're essentially looking for is a Pokemon that can one-hit KO itself, or a Pokemon that can be one-hit KO'd by a common partner, and a deck where you're likely to be playing the same amount of energy. So let's say, for argument's sake, you're in a Pikachu and Zekrom Tag Team GX mirror match. Now, the downside is you're not able to use Thunder Mountain because you're not a lightning Pokemon. But you can still accelerate energy with Tapu Koko, and you can still accelerate energy with Pikachu and Zekrom, and then you could potentially copy a GX attack, just like with Nihiligo. You can copy a GX attack, but you also copy the you only get one GX attack per game thing. So you can copy a GX attack, but then you flip over your GX counter, that's the only one you've got. So you can use Ditto to do 150 damage and accelerate free energy. Or you can use Ditto to do 200 to the active and 170 to the bench if you've got 6 energy on. Having said that, you really want to get all the energy on here in one go, because if you don't get all the energy on here in one go, you end up having a 60 HP Pokemon with like free energy on the bench. I mean, if you use Pikachu and Zekrom, accelerate to Ditto, and then to give it to your opponent because you've used your attack, they can Guzma and take out those free energy. That's not ideal. How about Malamar decks? In a Malamar deck, you're accelerating a whole bunch of energy, so, against anything with a colorless energy cost, you're golden. I wouldn't even rule out playing the odd rainbow energy here, so that you can copy other attacks. So, let's say, for argument's sake, you find yourself up against a Lycanroc GX Midnight form. Rainbow energy, one Malamar, and you copy Dangerous Rogue to get a one-hit KO on Lycanroc, just so long as they've got four benched Pokemon. That could be pretty gosh darned fun. If you're playing a Rayquaza deck, again, this can work out quite nicely. Now, Rayquaza tends to be played with Vikavolt, and Vikavolt essentially accelerates lightning and grass energy. So against any deck which has grass attackers or lightning attackers, you can use Vikavolt to get the energy out, and then you're golden. So if you're against a Pikachu and Zekrom deck, you can probably get the Lightning Energy on there to just copy Full Blitz as it is. Or if you're against a Golisopod deck, you can go ahead and copy any of their attacks because you've got Grass and you've got the Colorless Energy. Or if you happen to be against something like Tapu Bulu, now Tapu Bulu has seen a significant decrease in play. But if you are against a Tapu Bulu, then you can KO Tapu Bulu using its own attack. Or you can KO your opponent's Tapu Lele by copying the attack from Tapu Bulu. Or you can KO your opponent's Rayquaza using the attack on Tapu Bulu. Because remember, you're not just copying the active's attack. You are copying the attack of anyone. Now, there's plenty of Pokemon out there against which this is going to be fairly useless. So let's take something like Blacephalon. I mean, it just won the big Collinsville Regional, the last big regional in the US. And the thing is, right, Blacephalon does 50 damage for each fire energy attached. You've got to discard them all when you attack. Boo, hiss, etc. Wait a second. In a Vikavolt deck, this is useless. And in a Pikachu and Zekrom deck, this is useless. In a Malamar deck, this is useless. But what if you're playing Naganade or Blacephalon? And you find yourself in a mirror match against another Naganade or Blacephalon player. Now, admittedly, you're not going to be able to use Beast Ring to accelerate energy to your Ditto. Which means getting the two energy onto attack is going to be a bit of a pain. But then you can use Ditto to copy your opponent's Blacephalon. Lost Zone, a bunch of energy from your side of the field. Three if you've got a choice band, four if you don't. And then all of a sudden, you're getting a KO on a Blacephalon using a Ditto. Bearing in mind, your opponent is probably using attackers, well, basically just Blacephalon. They don't tend to play a whole bunch of other attackers. 
So you're just fighting Blacephalon against Blacephalon. All of a sudden, if you can take a Blacephalon down with a Ditto, that makes a huge difference. Incidentally, with a choice ban, Naganadal can take down a Blacephalon, but only when you have exactly three prize cards remaining, which is not ideal if you just want to KO free Blacephalon for the win. Though absolutely possible. Ditto is one of those cards where I can make an hour-long video showing you a whole bunch of uses, but the important thing here is this. There are plenty of weird situations, like playing a Vikavolt deck against a Tapu Bulu, like a Pikachu and Zekrom mirror match, like a Blacephalon mirror match, where you might, if you're playing Ditto and your opponent isn't, be able to get a KO on a GX using a non-GX, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to absolutely swing it in your prize trade, and that is absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to be giving Ditto four Wossies. And with the exception of the Greninjas, which really are good, links to those videos in the description, I think this might be the best card in the Detective Pikachu set. It's really good. But I would very much like to know what you think about it. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, ladies and gentlemen. But please do remember the rule. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all of that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays where we talk about other games but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio